You're probably aware that I redecorate a lot. We're gonna tackle some things in this corner. Why do I need five different drill bits to get this done? Why? So, get ready for some more decorating. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Becky and welcome back to our channel, The Sorry Girls, um, and also welcome back to another DIY Diaries episode. If you don't know what this is and maybe you're new here, A, consider subscribing, and B, this is basically a way for me to document all of the various things I DIY around my home. I redecorate a ton. It's one of my deepest passions and the fun thing about this channel is that I get to share all of that with you guys. So that's what we're doing again today. Today we have one really big DIY project we're doing and then a whole bunch of styling right here in my living room. And I know you're probably aware that I redecorate a lot, but I do think there is some importance to it, especially during this event that we're all experiencing together. I think it's so important to always be trying new things and keeping your brain happy and healthy. And that's why I'm so happy to announce that today's sponsor is Skillshare. If you don't know, Skillshare is a really cool online learning community that has thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Whether you're looking to enhance a skill that you maybe already have or you wanna learn something new entirely, Skillshare has a class for you. But I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about them later and why I love them. But let's, let's just jump into the first DIY because it's a big one and we gotta get started, folks. Okay, so first up, we're gonna tackle some things in this corner. We are currently in my living room. It's like an open concept space, so technically this is the dining room if I were to have one. Um, it's like the corner of my living room where we have the dining table in it. So, behind me is a closet, and this closet door, I am quite confident, <laughs> is an IKEA DIY project from the previous owners. I'm pretty sure these are mirrors that IKEA sells that have been glued to this door and painted white. And while very cute and wholesome, I've known that I've wanted to swap out this door like ever since we moved in basically. And my original plan was to swap it for a door that matches kind of all the existing closet doors on this floor, which are like glass paneled. I'll show you, these doors. <laughs> so that was the original plan for this DIY project. But then as I was researching, trying to find doors, which turned out to be impossible to find a matching door to the ones I have that wasn't gonna cost me like $500. This journey, this DIY journey, this DIY diary took a different path altogether because I found the coolest door that someone was selling on Marketplace for a very good price. And it was too good to pass up. So long story short, I got the door. It's at the office, but the door is much larger than the actual Actual space of this door so my entire plan is changing because I want to work with the new door because it's so cool I do not want to cut it down and make it fit in this space I want to make this space work with the door you with me you with me okay and there's one other aspect to this story which um, is gonna affect the reason why I'm doing the DIY the way I'm doing it let me show you so this is the corner I was talking about. It's a little bit tight. There's enough space for we have benches on each side of the table, which is great for people to sit fine. But when you go to open this door, it's a little squishy. It gets stopped by that bench. There's not a lot of space for it to open that well. It's hard to get in here, which if you're wondering, this just is a little bit of storage and holds my like cleaning equipment. So what I've decided to do is do you see all this wall space beside this door that's not doing anything at all i had the brilliant idea that what i think i can do is install a sliding door that will open this way and then slide into this space that's not being used and then this door doesn't need to swing open anymore because the new door will just slide flush to the wall so my first step into this project i mean besides getting the door which i've already done is securing the sliding door hardware for it. I don't know exactly what I want, but I think there's probably gonna be some good options at the hardware store, so let's go. All right, we are on the hunt for some sliding door hardware. I'm pretty sure I've seen it at Home Depot before, so hoping I don't have to go somewhere special and I could just pick it up in store. We're entering the door, the door zone. Okay, I found them. I was hoping they'd have them on display on actual doors so I could see them, but they don't. But I think I can figure it out from the pictures on the boxes fine enough. Okay, so they have options like these where you can see the hardware like on top of the door, which I feel like is a little too farmhousey for me, but I found this option which just sits on the top of the door and I don't think, yeah, it doesn't actually go on to the door at all, which I think will be really, really, really nice. Okay, we're back. So they did not have this set up in the store, so I'm just gonna assume it's what I want, but I do think 
I might encounter a small problem and that is on this door there is a trim and I worry that this door hardware is not going to stick out far enough to accommodate for the door because usually when you have these doors there's no trim in the way it's just on the wall so I think the first step is going to be opening this up try and holding it up and seeing if there's going to be enough space for the door or if I need to remove the trim which I'm really hoping I don't <sighs> but let's see <laughs> All right, why do I need five different drill bits to get this done? Look at this. Do you see? It wants me to have five different sizes. Why? It's not this complicated. Oh, what? <laughs> it's also good when it tells you. There is a required part to do it, but it's not included. You need it, but you don't have it. What? Pre-installation, I don't get it. Okay, hold on, I'm only on the first place. Oh, and the second. Page is French. What, 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 what? Okay. Okay, got it. Got it. This is what matters. These little standoff bits go between the wall and the rail. And I need to make sure that this is gonna bump the rail out enough that there's room for the door to go in front of the trim. That's what we care about right now. Okay, so these will go here. I guess I need to cut this somehow too, eh? This is way too long for my wall. <laughs> That's a later me problem. Oh. It's the current me problem. <laughs> um. Ah! Okay, okay, this is very heavy. So, in conclusion, the trim is definitely going to be in the way, which is not what I wanted to hear, because that's a lot more work to take that off, but I'm gonna take a mental break from this, because needed. And I'm gonna go to the office and show you the door, which is really exciting, and that needs some work too, so we'll go, we'll go do that instead. Okay, so, this is the door. I've been <laughs> storing it at the office because it's really big. As you can maybe tell, it's really tall, so I think I might have to trim the bottom just a little bit, but I do want to leave it like pretty much the height of my walls because I can. And the glass is like square pane glass, which is what I was really looking for and um, doesn't have any like etching on it. A lot of the things I was finding had like pattern to the glass, but I like that this is plain. And yeah, it's vintage, which is cool. But as you can see, paint needs a lot of help. It's definitely peeling. And on this side, it's white. And on this side, <laughs> you can tell. It's green. So we're gonna have to do a lot of sanding and a lot of refinishing to get this beautiful again. But the fact that the glass is all in amazing condition is great. That would be the hardest thing to fix. So really all we have to do is just make this aesthetically cute again. So let's take it to the workstation. Okay, so first step is probably gonna be removing the hardware that I don't want in the way when I paint. I really like this handle. I think it's really cool and vintage. The one on this side, if you can tell, is a bit more simple and I probably won't keep that because I honestly only need one side of the handle anyways to just pull the door. And then I think there's hinges on this side too. Yeah, these can come off as well. Okay, so making decent progress on it, got most of the really flaky bits off, but the good news is that I evaluated where the handle was and realized the white side is gonna be the inside of the closet door, which means that you'll never see it because no one's gonna be standing inside my closet. So I'm way less concerned about getting this side perfect and more worried about the green side. And the green side looks like it's in way better condition. So all the things are working in my favor for this right now. So this stuff was really flaky, just got that off and now it's smooth. Although you can still see the cracks, so you can't really feel them, which is wonderful. And then like the stuff in here is still pretty, pretty bad, but I could spend forever getting that perfect. But like I said, you will never see this. So I'd rather spend my time on the other side, which you will see. All right, it's the next day, I'm back again, but I think I'm in a really good place to start painting now. It's all been sanded really smooth, which I'm happy about. Um, I think I'm gonna go in with a chalk paint first because chalk paint's really thick and just good at covering old things like this. I'm a little worried that the black I have isn't like black, black, but I'm gonna start with that anyways. Cause my hope is that it's gonna look like, basically like what we did here, this like kind of metal-ish industrial window. So that's why I think a dark black will be nice, but I'm gonna start with the chalk paint, see how that goes and then evaluate from there.
Okay, I don't know if you can tell, but here, there's all this like texture from the paint. And then over here, it's like silky velvet smooth. It's crazy how much a difference just a little sanding did. Okay, I feel like you can't tell. Just trust me. Texture, velvet. <laughs> okay, looking so good, feeling so smooth. Um, for the last coat, I'm actually gonna move on to this, which we just had at the office. It is, I put my thumb in it. <laughs> it's um, black and it's in flat, so it's not the same as chalk paint, but it's still a matte finish, and I think will actually be a darker black than this, which is good. I actually brought the hardware piece that I'm gonna use to the office, and as you can tell, it's like, this definitely looks more gray than this, so I think doing the black paint will really help match this better. All right guys, I'm keeping you on a cliffhanger to reveal the final door, but it is looking good. So in the meantime, we gotta tackle this trim. And I was just looking at it and I don't know how many bits are separate pieces because we've got this, which might be a piece on its own, I think. And then this, which I think is a piece on its own. And then this piece in here, I think is its own piece as well that goes all the way on the inside. And then we have this, which is door stopped which I might be able to just leave, but I don't know how to take this all apart because it's many pieces. So I think I'm just gonna take, where is it here? My X-Acto knife and carefully like cut through the paint and then see what we can chip away really carefully because I do not want to damage this wall because then that's just more repair work for me later. Slowly, we're getting somewhere. Also, let me show you why that X-Acto knife step was really important. Here is where I got a good cut through the paint. And then down here is where I didn't go all the way through with the knife. And as you can see, it took the paint with it, which is gonna be more to fix. Later, cut through your paint where you can first. <laughs> Safety glasses are important, guys. Oh my god, wow! <laughs> I can see there is original paint color under here, which means this trim wasn't always here, which means that there's probably less for me to patch after because it was finished first before this came up. Okay, feeling good. <laughs> first piece is off, um, <laughs> but I know this is the boring stuff, so let's cut to when this is off. much heavier than it looks. <laughs> okay, you're just gonna stay here for now. Okay guys, I'm very happy to share that progress has been made in the right direction. Things are looking really good. So I got all of the area around the door fully um, Covered, plastered, spackled, uh, filled. I fixed it, it looks good. <laughs> um, it's all smooth, it just needs a coat of paint obviously to really make it mesh with the rest of the wall. And I have all of the holes drilled into the appropriate studs for where the beam can go and that was something that was stressing me out. Could I get it in the right spot? Um, the math to space it all out, but that's done. So we are moving on to painting the wall and then we can hang this door. So that metal bar was actually super easy to cut down using a jigsaw with the right metal blade. I also needed to trim the bottom of the door a little bit and install the wheels on the top of the door so it could slide easily along the bar. Back at home, it was just a matter of finally getting the bar up in place using the bolts that it came with. Ooh, okay. So far, so good. And then Austin was able to help me lift that door into its final place. Ready? What's for dinner? Is your side now? Okay. Right. Oh my god. <laughs> it's just settling, it's supposed to do that. It's so smooth! Are you impressed? Very. It looks so good. Great. 
great. Thank you so much for your help. That'd be $60. Okay. Okay, before I give you the final reveal of how it looks, I'm just teasing it in the corner here, I wanted to take a second to just tell you about today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. So like I said, I love changing things up in my home. That's why this whole series exists, because I do it so often and I wanted to share it with you guys. But I think part of that satisfaction of doing something new is being able to maybe explore a new design trend or learn a new skill along the way. Maybe like learning how to install your own sliding barn door hardware for the first time. It's so fun to learn something new, which is why I really love Skillshare for this purpose. There are classes on Skillshare for interior design if you guys get excited about this stuff like I do and are looking to revamp your home, but there are also lots of other classes on stuff like film and video, photography, graphic design, and much more. I actually found this really cool class called Design for Renters, Reversible Interior Design by Albie Bobang. This is such a good class for people that like to switch things up like me, but maybe are renting and are looking for simple, non-permanent solutions. Skillshare is specifically made for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always adding new premium classes so you can stay focused and create amazing things. And best of all, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 of our subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of a premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Okay, should we get to that reveal? Okay, next up is a really exciting one and it involves this couch, which is why I'm lying on it. This one is less of a DIY with me and more of a decorate with me, but I think you guys will like that. Austin, so <laughs> This couch has served us many good years. It's over five years old. It's been in two of our homes and we're finally saying goodbye to it. It is actually going to my neighbor, so I'm glad that it's getting a good second home, but we are getting a new one and our new one is coming tomorrow, so today, I have to clear out this space and um, pass on this couch to get ready for the new one, which I will tell you all about and show you when it comes tomorrow. Oh, and I think that when I get the new one, it's gonna inspire me likely to do some other redecorating in the space to make it work with the new couch, which spoiler is not white. So get ready for some more decorating. <laughs> Good morning! Couch is coming shortly and I'm so excited. We have the space all cleared out and ready for the new one and... Denny, are you excited? Oh, he's so sleepy still. I think he's confused because this old spot on the couch is now gone, but you will get a new one! <laughs> Okay guys, so this is it. This is the Nirvana sectional and it was very graciously gifted to me by my friends at Articles. So let me tell you about them if you're not yet aware. Article makes it really easy to attain a beautiful and modern living space or home and right now, home is a very important place to be for all of us. Article offers high quality furniture at a great price that is designed to last, which brings me to why I chose this sofa specifically. So the Nirvana sectional is one of their softest sofas made with distressed leather. It has a lot of natural color variations and marks and creases, but that's what provides its unique characteristics. 
So I do want to say that in the past, I have definitely tried my best to steer clear of leather products in my furniture choices, but ever since owning a dog, my opinion has changed a little bit on this. So my old sofa was a leather sofa, and I found myself taking all the cushions and the covers off every couple weeks and washing everything, which was a full day-long process and used a ton of water, like every time I had to do it. And that's because fabric was holding on to this puppy dirt and hair, which just was like an endless process to clean all of the time. And I found a really helpful article that lists the benefits of leather uh, furniture. And I talked to all of my friends that have pets and leather sofas, and it just comes down to leather being a more durable product that does not hold on to dog hair and dirt the way that my old one does. It's really easy to just wipe off and clean instantly. And a small bonus point being that article sources all of its leather from food byproduct, meaning that the material is being recycled into a new thing instead of being sent strictly to waste. I do know that this is of course a personal decision that everyone has to make on their own and what works for me totally might not be right for your lifestyle. But what I do know is that with the right care, this could last me many, many, many years, which just in the long run seemed like a better alternative than a fabric one that I would end up replacing more frequently. That being said, if leather is not the right option for you, Article does have many other fabric options as well. You can shop Article online right now and they are shipping with contactless delivery to make sure that everyone stays safe. In stock items ship super fast with estimated times on each product page. Article ships almost anywhere in Canada and the US for a flat rate of $49 and it's free shipping if your order is above $999. So thank you so much Article, check all the links in the description, let's carry on. Okay, so like still very, very happy with this couch. I love it so much. Um, but one thing that happened, which I n suspected would happen when introducing such a new furniture piece that's so big and a different color than the one before it, it's making me rethink a lot of the decor around it that go with it. Specifically, the first one being these curtains. They're like a really nice taupe linen, but I just don't think the taupe meshes with the brown like as best as it could. So I'm gonna be replacing them. And also something I've always wanted for this space was blackout curtains, um, which these are not. So if you ever wanna have like a nice midday nap here on this couch, now you can do it before you could not. <laughs> the light coming through this window is so blinding. And one thing that was weirdly hard to find is blackout curtains that are actually white and like a nice white. So many of them were black. Just cause I want blackout curtains doesn't mean I want literal black curtains. So I think I found the right ones. They're from the H&M home line. I will link them below, but I'll put them up first just to make sure I really like them. But so far I'm pretty impressed. They literally came in the mail today. So we'll get those up and I think it will mesh with the brown color a little bit better because they are a white, did I say that already? But like a cream? That's the first thing we're gonna do. Need to get steam, but it's the perfect length and it do block that light. <laughs> So the front is this really heavy kind of linen weave and the underside is this thick silky material, which is also super thick. So I think combined, they do a really good job blocking up the light and actually it looks really nice. And then the next change comes in the form of lighting. I am like, my two biggest vices when it comes to home decor are cool chairs and cool lighting. I could just own an endless amount of either of those two. So in a recent video where we rated our home decor, I talked about these sconces I had from CB2 and how I just like was feeling okay about them. And especially doing that video made me realize I didn't love them for this space. So I actually listed them on Marketplace and they went to um, really good homes, I think. <laughs> so happy they have a new home, but in its place, I found two of like the best marketplace finds or Kijiji, I think one of each that I've ever found in terms of lighting. So let me show you those. I'm really hyped. I think they're gonna look so good in this space. Okay, this is the first one and I already hung it because I was just too excited to see it in the space. It is a swing arm, authentic 70s mid-century style with like real teak wood and the shade is like a, how would you even describe it? It's like string that's been formed in this shape, which let me just show you it on. Turn on my lights. Um, how cute is she? How cute. <laughs> I'm very slowly working on converting my home to be like only cool antique pieces from the 70s because it's like the one thing that I just, brings me so much joy deep down because the fact that you can't buy this stuff anymore, like it's literally from however many years ago, it's so cool. So found someone selling this, it was a really good price, knew it was such a special piece. It's now in my living room. My living room's on its way to be like the coolest 70s um, hangout spot. 
let me show you the next light. And then this one, truly like my biggest steal of the century, although not a 70s antique. It's a new, well new to me piece, but a newer piece. Still think it fits with the vibe and I'm very excited about it. This is a, it doesn't look this good from this angle, hold on, let me give you her cute side. A restoration hardware, yes we heard that right, restoration hardware picture light, which is gonna go up there to illuminate my records. I think it's gonna look sweet. And just the fact that I own something from restoration hardware and I was able to thrift it, big flex. Little flex, big little flex. I'm very happy about it. So let's get this up on the wall and see how it looks. <laughs> Okay, I have no idea how bright this is, so let's find out together. Ready? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think it's the light bulbs I don't like. They're very orange, and they're definitely flickering. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Let me see how that looks for you guys. Oh no! <laughs> the flickering is amplified for you guys. Woo! Okay. Well, that has just simply got to go. It's cute like this, though. Okay, so that's just gonna be a matter of me getting different bulbs for this, better bulbs for this. I think it's definitely gonna be entirely possible to find something better. So I'm not too worried. The only thing is it probably won't happen in this video, so you just have to use your imagination that it lights up and looks great. Are you picturing it? Great. But one thing we can do today to make it look a little cuter is these things. I have sworn by these in videos before. They are cord covers and they have adhesive already built onto the back and they just snap over any wires like this that looks unsightly on your wall and just disguises them in with the wall. Um, if you don't have a light that is hardwired or hard hardwiredable. Is that a word? Hardwiredable? Anyways, I'm gonna put this on and then I think we can call this a day until I can get better bulbs. <laughs> I said these were easy to use, but the snapping them together is the hardest part. Ow. Okay, there we go. And even though it was already white, I wanted to paint it the exact shade of my wall for maximum blend. And of course, no space makeover is complete without the final touches, so let's add a little spice and the living room makeover is complete. Thank you so much guys for hanging out with us while I made over this living room slash dining room. It's one big room, but it all got kind of like a facelift. I think this was a lot of fun to do. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and maybe learned a couple tips here or there, or this inspired you to start a new project in your home. If you're looking for even more home inspo, this is a series I do relatively often. There's a couple episodes out already of makeovers and projects I've done around my home. Check out the playlist linked at the end here for more videos about that. Thanks so much for watching guys and we will see you next time. Make sure to subscribe. Who is it? Is it people not subscribing? <laughs> All right, thanks so much for watching guys and we will see you next time. Bye.